All right, folks, you are in for a super treat today. I'm talking the Hall of Fame show. We went from zero to two years. The next guest coming up and going to eclipse $100 million in sales. How did they do that? It was all organic and YouTube. What? What the heck's going on? You're going to meet Levi Lassick and Travis Plum coming up next on Clipstone. Real estate agents, are you struggling with the day-to-day -day grind, dialing for dollars, putting in hours of floor time with little to show for it? Are you looking for tips, tricks, and tactics to accelerate your career as an agent that will have you closing more homes, working with more clients, and earning more money than ever before? Hi, my name's Cliff Freeman, and I've spent the past two decades of my real estate career running one of the top brokerages in DFW and personally coaching over a thousand high-performing real estate professionals across North America. I created this podcast to share the strategies and tactics you need to explode your real estate business. I guarantee it. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to guarantee it today. We're going to be <laughs> laying it down all show. I mean, this is going to be something. C3, I know you guys are real close here and everything. And uh, Levi, we want to welcome you and Travis today, man. Super stoked. It took a long time to get you here, but man, we're going to, we're going to lay it down today. When you guys met, I, I guess in Cabo for a little while, didn't you? The first time we, m we met was in Cabo. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Poolside. It was a good time. It's poolside. Good, it's a good, yeah. good spot to meet in. Then we went deep sea fishing. <laughs> and then deep sea That's fishing. That's right. right. It was a good time. Was there any of the devil's elixir involved in any of these trips? Uh, or, uh, maybe a little. Just Not a little. Too much. Not yeah. too much. Mostly water. All right, good. We good were modest. We were yeah, we were pretty We did chop up the mahi mahi on the boat. Yeah. And, oh my yeah, god. And cool. ate it raw. Yeah. yeah. Well, was... not raw. They seasoned it for us. Put a little sauce on it. Yeah. A little shishire yeah. or something. Yeah. You know, it was laid that baby up though. It was, it was good. good. Yeah. Ate the whole fish before we got yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> I think that's the only way. I mean, when you're down in Cabo, boy, that's the best ceviche you can get oh, right yeah. on the boat there, isn't it? Yeah. That, that was definitely one of the best trips I've ever been on. It was, I mean, it was amazing. The whole, the whole thing was just great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, uh, you know, let's go ahead and just, and, and unpack a few things. You guys have, have made a few trips yourselves. Uh, in fact, uh, you, uh, both of you guys served in, in the military and, uh, Travis, uh, uh, you were in the Navy and, Levi, I know that uh, you did some time with the Army uh, in the infantry, you were telling me earlier. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, wow, what got you to go that direction? Travis? Well, I mean, you know, for me, when I want, I, I, the, the biggest factor for me was I'll never forget um, when 9-11 happened. Uh, I was going to ninth grade and I was going to my math class and 9-11 and happened. And from that moment on, I knew that I wanted to join the military and I wanted to fight for my country. And, you know, so right out of high school, I mean, two weeks later, I, I shit myself out. And, you know, I thought it was really going to be good for my mindset and just getting out of, you know, some of the sphere that I was in when I was growing up. I wanted to get out of that place and I wanted to grow. I wanted to see the world. I wanted to, you know, fight for our country and you know my grandfather and my father were both veterans and so that was what i felt was was the right thing to do and it you know it definitely changed my life for sure and you picked the navy were they in the the navy as well uh, my grandfather was in the navy and my uh, my dad he was in the army i actually went into the navy originally to get into the navy seal program there was a marine place and a navy place right next to each other and wow. it's funny my recruiter was like hey yeah you can get into the navy seals no problem whatsoever so i was like okay cool this is exactly what i'm going to do and i get into boot camp and they have like this special class for people who are training to go to buds who want to become navy seals and i do that almost the entire time through boot camp and when, when I would say probably three or four weeks before I graduated, um, they said that I couldn't get into the SEAL program because my eyesight was just so bad that I would have to wait till I'm at least 21 before my eyes. Uh, they would have to do like an eyesight exam on me to make sure that my eyes weren't changing anymore. And by the time you know I was 21, that was when I did my first tour in Iraq. I uh, did back-to-back -back tours in Iraq. And then uh, after that, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to get out of here. I, I didn't like some of the people that I was working with. And I got out of the military and, and kind of just started on my next thing wow that's uh that's an incredible start to uh uh to to for a 21 year old and, and yeah. younger to you know to uh to to get a kick out of uh out of the house and into the real world for sure levi you were in the uh, army what what was going on uh, with you well i wish i would have went first now because that was so noble <laughs> one i mean i just wanted to get college money <laughs> so that's uh, that's all i wanted to do it was uh this was uh, what happened was I grew up uh, south of here in Stephenville, Texas. It's two hours south of Dallas. 
uh, if, if you're not milking cows or riding bulls, then there's really not much else to do there. My, you know, my parents didn't go to college. My two older brothers didn't go to college. And we were raised. Every, all I ever heard from my parents was, we can't afford that. And so, you know, there was no insight into college at all. I grew up believing I will never go to college. And it just wasn't in the cards until I worked about a year after high school, mopping floors and stocking shelves. And I just said, I can't do this for the rest of my life, which is what most people do in my hometown. And so I was like, what, how do I get out of here? And it was join the military. And I thought this was, this was 1999. So I thought the world was at peace. Nobody's going to mess with us anymore. The last Gulf War ended in nine days, you know, <laughs> got over right. like that. And I was like, oh, we're good. We're getting the internet's coming around. Like, it's all cool. So let me just get in and I'll get out. And so seriously, just got in for some college money to try to get myself out of Stephenville. And then two years later, September 11th happened. Next thing I know, I'm deployed in Iraq as well. So, oh my gosh, wow. So yeah, I spent a year over in, uh, in Baghdad uh, in the infantry, so ran combat patrols, gun trucks, and, and uh, in 2005. Yeah, well, I, first of all, we want to, again, thank you guys for, for the sacrifice that you made and, and uh, going out there and doing some things that some of us haven't had an opportunity to do and probably would be too scared to <laughs> get out there and go through what you guys had to go through. But thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and then so, uh, Travis, you were saying that sort of catapulted you into another career uh, after the Navy. What, yeah. what did you get into next? Well, you know, it, it, it's really funny. I, when, I, when I got out of the Navy, I really wanted to be a police officer. I wanted to go into SWAT. I wanted to be a badass. You know what I mean? Like, that, was like, that was like it. I had to be this badass guy. <laughs> And um, badass they, real estate. Yeah, <laughs> I am a badass real estate agent. And so, um, you know, I, I got out. I applied for Dallas PD, and they actually turned me down. It, they were like on a hard hiring freeze or whatever. They were just hiring like a, a bunch of minorities at the time, and it just I wasn't a good fit for the D Dallas Police Department. So in the meantime. I ended up working at this bottle uh, packaging plant and it was like, I mean, I was making like 18 bucks an hour. I was like, okay, cool. I'm making more money than I was in the military. You know, I'm 6'3". All these bottle manufacturing things that would like run the, the uh, all the plastic through were like five foot. So I was like working like 12, 13 hours a day, ducking underneath this. My back was hurting. And I was like, this, this just isn't for me. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And my brother, he's a master mechanic. The dude, he's just absolutely brilliant. He fixes up like custom cars and stuff. And, you know, he was working at a Ford dealership and I would just go over there and help him fix up some cars. And, uh, you know, one day I was out, I was outside, like there was like all these car sales guys hanging out of the, at the smoke pit. It, and I was just walking by and they're like, Hey, you, you trying to buy a car? I was like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not trying to buy a vehicle, man. And, um, anyways, I ended up getting introduced from my brother to the general manager at the time. And he was like, this is one of my first mentors. The dude's great. His name is fortunes O'Neill. And he comes up to me and he goes, he's like, what did you do before this uh, son? And I was like, man, I, I just got out of the military a few months ago. He was like, you're telling me you were in the military. And, uh, and I was like, yes, sir. I was. And he's like, you think you can sell? I was like, man, I can sell ice to the Eskimos. And that's what I'm good at. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, you show up tomorrow with a shirt and a tie and you got yourself a job. Nice. So I had like no money. I was living at home with my parents. I went to Macy's and got the most baggiest suit that I could. I mean, the best suit that I could get. It was all baggy and not tailored. And, you know, I, I got into car sales and I just I hit it really hard. I set a ton of records in sales on the used car side. I tell people all the time, like real estate, I love real estate. It's just so much more fun and enjoyable and no one's trying to beat you up. In the car business, people would literally try to fist fight you for like a $200 mini uh, car deal. So I, I started in the used cars, I moved up to new cars, then I was the floor manager. I went out and closed all the deals for all the guys who couldn't close deals. And then I was the first guy who got moved into the finance position there, the youngest guy in 18 years, went into finance. I set a whole bunch of records in, in the finance department and you know, after six years of the car business, I got out and, and uh, moved on to my next venture, which was inter like internet marketing, funnels, ads, all, all that good stuff. So yeah, car business was my first job right out of the military, the real job out of the military. Yeah, what's the most number of cars you ever sold in a, in a month? I would say it was like, probably like 37. Wow. Yeah, 37, which was a lot because like the fleet guys, you know, they would sell 50, 60, 75, but they had all these like fleet contracts. And I would just, I mean, I was just always good at talking to people. I was never really scared to talk to people. And I, I found out other ways to kind of like hustle instead of having to call all day, every day, I would go back to the service drive. I would, I would talk to the people in the service drive and, and, and anytime a car uh, went over on their manufacturer's warranty of 36,000 miles, I would, I would pay them to tell me, Hey, is this car? 
car over their mileage and they would just start sending me these referrals. Hey, this car is over 36. This person's talking about potentially wanting to trade in the car. And I would just do all these different things um, in order to try to, to attract those clients. But yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a good time, man. I yeah. learned a lot. Have you ever taken a disc assessment? Uh, no, I don't think I have. No. I mean, I probably, I probably have at some point in my life. I don't remember exactly what that yeah. was. Though. Yeah. I'd like you to take one. You got it, man. And we'll see <laughs> you what, got what do you think he's going to be. Oh, uh, if I were to take a guess, uh, definitely a, a D-I. Uh, I, I'd say I-D. I-D. Yeah. 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 Okay. Which is great for sales. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, Levi, you, you, uh, <laughs> you also had a pretty illustrious career. Uh, and, in fact, you spent a little time with a mutual friend of ours. Uh, tell us about what happened uh, after you got out of the service. Well, I, so I, when I got out and then uh, I, I actually had a job like $8 an hour, graduated up to this $15 an hour job. I was driving or I wasn't driving. I was unpacking and packing trucks at Roadway. So at the uh, in Irving. And it, I remember during the wintertime, it was freezing cold because I worked the, the midnight shift like 11 to 7 a.m. And uh, I got there. They started paying me 15 bucks an hour. So I thought I was rich. And then one night they let me drive a forklift, which they were not supposed to do that because I was still too new. And I was driving around and I hit the center pole of the building and really knocked it out of alignment. And then I drove off and I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when they checked the cameras and everything, uh, the next day I went in, they fired me. And uh, what was funny, though, is that uh, I was looking for a gym at the time and I called uh, I called a Valley Total Fitness and Michael Reese answered the phone. He was selling memberships there. Oh, he he, he talked. Yeah. yeah that was oh, over. I know. Oh, yeah. First of all, he got me in the gym. Yeah. Then he sold me the most expensive gym membership on a three-year contract with personal training. Everything that I could not afford. It was like more than I was making in a month. And so, uh, so after, and then I lost that job and I couldn't afford. So I went up there to talk to him to try to get him to cancel the membership. And those ballet contracts were like they're like oh, cars. It's like yeah. buying a car. Yeah. 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 So he ended up just recruiting me. Uh, now, that, that I was still in the reserves whenever I got out. I was still in the reserves at that time. So I uh, worked with Michael, and that's, that was like my first introduction to sales. And, and it was membership sales at the gym were hardcore. It was yeah. 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I yes. mean, it's, it's probably like car sales. Like 10 to 10 was the schedule. And we would call from 10 to 8. And so you're from 8 to 10 at night, you would get ready for the next day. And so you just make phone calls all day, the whole goal to get five appointments in there. And so that's what just, I think, uh, instilled an additional work ethic in addition to the military. But um, I've always kind of had that, you know, growing up. And, and so uh, that was, uh, I remember the weekend he met Jay Kinder, actually, and came back to the club on Monday. And he was like, I'm getting into real estate. And I was kind of like, okay, good luck. I just never had any desire to be a real estate agent. Now, it took about another year or so before he finally talked me into it. So I actually did get licensed in 2004, but uh, the week, about uh, one to two weeks after I got licensed and was about to start working with Michael, uh, I got, that's whenever I got the call. So I was still in the reserves and I got the phone call. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and they called, okay. I literally okay. a phone call and they said, hey, uh, you're being activated, you leave in four days. Ooh. And I was and I was gone for 18 months. So yeah. that's, so that's where I was, I was gone from 2004 to 2006. And so whenever mm -hmm. I came back in 2006, uh, I just wasn't ready to really deal with Michael because I knew <laughs> <laughs> you were still paying off the gym membership. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, still, yeah, yeah. I still, uh, I still had to pay for that. They wouldn't. I was like, "Hey, I'm getting deployed," and they're like, "Nope, you still got to yeah, pay." Right, yeah. So, uh, and so when I came back, I actually got into cell phones. I was selling cell phones at Costco because I just wanted to get in a job, like get my mind off of everything. Just I wanted to get to work, and that was it. And I didn't want to be involved with. Actually, Michael, he kind of scared me because I was like, I knew he was going to push me, and I wasn't really ready for that. And, and so I started selling cell phones at Costco. That got me recruited to a pharmaceutical job. And, and uh, you know, over that time frame, the, the problem was is I had, uh, you know, I, I came home with the digestive disease from Iraq. And so that messed with me for about eight years. And then in 2013, I ended up losing 50 pounds in a single month. And I became completely bedridden and disabled, and, and uh, that nearly killed me. So, wow. yeah, I was, and that was 10 years ago. I was 33 years old. And uh, if you saw the pictures, they're they're horrendous. Wait a How old are you now? I'm 43. Yeah. Really? <laughs> you, yeah, you can tell, right? <laughs> yeah. I, the first time I met both of these guys. You, yeah. You, you, how old do you think? Travis is 45. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I am 45. I look amazing. Dude, no, you guys drink stem cells for breakfast? <laughs> I wish. I wish. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm 36. Wheaties, now. Yeah. you know. Wheaties. Yeah. But yeah. Travis is 36. Lots of lots 40, of water. Yeah. Lots of water. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't I didn't know that's part of your part yeah. of your life. Wow. 
That, yeah, I mean, it was it was the it was the worst part. I would have rather been back in Iraq, but uh, yeah, when you lose fifty pounds in a month, it was it was in horrific. A month. Yeah, yeah, in one month. So you were like skin. I was oh skin and bones. Gosh. Yeah. Did you have like a flesh eating something or other? No, it was a it was a colon disease. Yeah. Colon disease. Yeah. So I couldn't oh. hold in any food or water, and so I just whatever I would eat would just you know pass through. Yeah, go straight through. You couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't oh absorb gosh. any nutrition, and so yeah. yeah, three months it was it was the worst thing I'd ever been through, mm. and I went to four different GI doctors. They threw the kitchen sink at me. I couldn't get me better, and it was really uh, God's grace that I found a natural doctor. Yeah, the natural really? doctor, yeah, it was like, hey, let's just change your diet and put you on some vitamins. And so I was able to recover naturally with no medication. Oh or my certain, yeah. gosh! Yeah, after struggling with that for eight oh, years. Oh yeah. yeah. That is. Yep. Insane. And now, now it's been ten years actually, and I've had zero signs, symptoms, and you know, wow. which doctors told me I'd be on medication, and it was an incurable disease. They said I'd have it for the rest of my oh, life. Yeah. yeah. That's that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, that's a testimony it's a right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it is. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Wow. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's move on here to real estate. Okay. <laughs> now you guys are a team, but yes. this team really. How did it get started? Tell us the story. Yeah, I mean, I I, I love this part of the story because, you know, Michael Reese and Jay Kinder are also uh, buddies of mine through a couple other mutual friends. And before I got into real estate in December of 2000, uh, 2020, I was like on my way out. I had a couple really bad business partners. I'll spare the story there. Um, had a couple really bad business partners. And in September of 2020, I knew that I was I was making this this change going into real estate. And I was actually over at Michael Reese's house with him and Woods Davis working on a software and a CRM with them and kind of helping them out with some things on their CRM when, when Levi came in there, you know what I mean? And so, you know, Levi, he, he's like, if you, if you don't, if you don't know him at the very beginning, he's, he's like a really like, does this guy like, like me? Does he hate me? Like, it's like, what's going on? He's like a really quiet guy, right? Best, one of the best guys I know, but you know, I didn't know that at the time. And, and we kind of just, you know, I left and went our, we went our separate ways and you know, he stuck around, I left and you know, I got licensed at the very end of December in 2020. And, you know, I started, you know, my, when I got out of the car business, I, I worked for some of the top internet marketers in the world. I'd, I'd managed millions of dollars in portfolios for like ad spend and budgets and all that stuff over the, the four years that I was doing that. And so when I first got in, I was, I'd launched my Facebook ads and Instagram and I'd launched all these different campaigns. And I was just sitting there all day, just calling these leads. No one was, I mean, I knew what I was getting myself into. I was just hoping for, you know, one or two deals for the leads that I was generating calling all these leads and I was like man I just I do not want to do this I don't want to cold call um, I was trying that out as well I don't want to door knock and you know I was looking at all these other platforms you know same thing Levi was doing behind the scenes that I didn't know and I was like I think YouTube's like gonna be the way for me I think I can definitely do this right and so I, I saw Levi you know he had you know 30 40 50 subscribers at the time but I really liked his videos you know and I and then we had already been introduced and I and so I reached out to him one day and I was like dude I really love your videos man like how are you how are you doing this you know uh, what are you doing like what's your flow all these different questions and you know he was just nice enough we, we ended up meeting up and I was like he was doing Dallas and I was like hey I, I'm gonna do Fort Worth I kind of live on that side of the the Metroplex and I was like okay I'll do Fort Worth you do Dallas and you know we'll just kind of we'll just kind of work together and just kind of just see how things go type of thing right mm -hmm. and so you know it's really funny the first video that I ever went to go shoot was in Mansfield and I suck so bad. I was not prepared. <laughs> he was like, man, just make sure you know your script before you meet up with me. I don't want to, I don't want you wasting my time. You know? <laughs> I don't want to waste my time, bro. <laughs> and so I didn't memorize the script and I totally sucked big time. And Levi ended up basically shooting the whole video for me. I was like, thanks, man. I appreciate you, bro. And so it was a great video. And, you know, we just, you know, I felt, I feel like, you know, we just, we had a good time. We, we, you know, we're kind of just filling each other out. You know, Levi, I'm sure he'll share his story. Had a couple bad business partners as well. And and, um, you know, we were kind of cautious about partnering up, but, and I felt like that synergy was really, really good. You know, I, I wanted to get out of marketing. I didn't want to do any more marketing if I could avoid it. I was like, Hey dude, like if you want to just shoot the videos, like I'll just close, I'll, I'll close a hundred deals. Like if you send them to me, I promise you I'm going to close all these transactions or whatever. Right. And so, you know, we, we kind of work dated for a little while and, um, in March of 2021, you know, he was actually going to go out of town and he had, he had basically Airbnb his house. That's like a little hack, right? Where you Airbnb your house while you go and it pays for your travel, it pays for your mortgage. So he had Airbnb his house out for, you know, three or four weeks because he was supposed to go out of town. And so he canceled that trip and he's like, well, I don't have a place to stay. I was like, you know, long story short, I was like, you can come stay with me, man, for three weeks. So we started kind of just working together, just like really enjoying it, man. We were just, you know, I felt like we were getting closer and closer. And then, I mean, we just, we just never stopped. I mean, back then, I mean, we were pulling 
on the longest days. I mean, 4 a.m. to midnight. I mean, we were up on, on, on Zooms at 11 o'clock midnight, 1 a.m., you know, just working and, and trying to build our business. So that's kind of how we met. Wow. Um, was it love at first sight? <laughs> I mean, I was in love at first sight. I definitely didn't know how he was. Funny. I mean, how do you know, right, that this is going to wind up being, you know, a business partner in a very successful business? Did you know that, like, early on in the equation? I mean, I think you get a feel for people quickly. I mean, you know, being in sales, I, I mean, all the jobs I had before were sales. And so you, you learn how to read people initially, right? You make, yeah. you do make snap judgments a lot of times. And so, uh, but I know that I remember the first time the thing, the reason I'm so quiet is because usually I'm analyzing. Oh, yeah. And so I like to sit back. I'm an observer and I just like to watch. And so I, I, I was watching Travis very closely the first time he came over to Michaels. I, I wasn't intending to partner up with him, but anytime I meet somebody, I'm a little bit more reserved. I, I, I have a very close circle. I like to keep it that way. I'm not not really the the party guy that go out and want to you know be with yeah. everybody. It's like I like my my core group. They have to be great people, good values. And so you know I'm just real reluctant about who I who I open up to you know about those types of things. And so especially business. But I knew from the beginning I, I did want a partner because uh, I'd been in sales you know for on and off 15 years there, 15, 20 years. And I just, I, I was kind of a new chapter in my life. I wanted to focus on marketing and attracting and business and kind of uh, just sell differently uh, as far as to many versus one-to-one. -one. So yeah, meeting Travis, that was the thing is that um, I was, I, I was going to Belize actually for a month yep. and this was about the third month of the channel and it really started to take off. Um, it, things started, you know, start phone calls really started to come mm -hmm. in. And so I just made the judgment to cancel that, which cost me a flight and, and, and things that I had booked out. So I lost that money. And then I just had the problem of my, my home being booked out. So, I mean, I could have went and got a hotel, but we just yeah, happened exactly. to be on zoom chatting. And he was like, well, why don't you just come stay at my place? I was like, cool. So whenever we went over there, calls just kept coming in at that time. It just started to snowball. And and that's what I saw Travis. He was like, look, man, I'll, that's what he said. I'll close it. I'll close it all. I, I want to sell a hundred homes. <laughs> I love and it. I was thinking, actually, I don't want to sell any homes. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. like, I just, I just want to kind of make some videos and, and work on, <laughs> on the, the operational side of the sure. business. So I started to just, you know, pass that started to come over there and Travis went out there, started showing homes, closing deals. And of course, this was in the time whenever the market really started to heat up. Mm, yeah. And then when you start seeing 10, 20 offers come in, I mean, I just, this guy started working over listing agents like nobody's business and started winning like every single deal nice. and, and beating nice. out 20, 30 offers sometimes. Yeah. And, and, uh, so I was just like, well, uh, you know, he definitely knows how to sell. So, you know, and we just, uh, we always clicked too. Yeah. I mean, and that was something yeah. we, we just got along from the beginning, but yeah, we, we didn't rush into it. We worked together for probably six to eight months. Mm -hmm before we made anything official. Yeah. yeah, so so really, I mean, you're the guy with the video s skill set, I guess. I'm a YouTuber with a YouTuber real estate license. With that's real estate it. License. <laughs> okay. that's great he, this is a YouTube king right here. <laughs> okay, yeah. and and how did you acquire that that talent? That did you, was it a skill set you had to build? What, what are no, you No, I don't, I don't think it so. Or? It was uh, It was funny, somebody just asked me that question this morning and it, they said, were you scared? Of the, I wasn't scared of the camera. I think what I had to learn was how to sell to the camera. Uh, you know, because I had been selling to people you know, that I can touch, touch and feel, right. watch facial expressions, you know, they ask questions, they interrupt you, you know, it's an interaction. So whenever you're doing that on camera and you're looking at that camera, you have to learn how to actually have a conversation with that camera and make eye contact so that you're staring into the eyes of the person on the other side. Exactly. So that was a little bit of a learning curve that, but otherwise, you know, after going through Iraq and <laughs> major <laughs> digestive diseases and, and, you know, a lot of other setbacks in my life, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that it's, it, I, I believe you can work through anything. If you, yeah, yeah. if you keep moving forward, you know, yeah. you can, you can work through anything. So for me, it wasn't, I wasn't scared of the camera. It was just, um, and I didn't have any desire to be like this YouTuber or a superstar real estate agent. I'm just the type of person that I'm, I'm going to work and, and try to be the best at whatever I do. Now, what does that mean? Uh, it just depends. I didn't know what that mean, what that meant in real estate. Mm -hmm. I don't know what people's level of success was in their first year. Uh, I do know that Michael said, 
Jay, it took Jay five years, uh, his fifth year, before he hit a million in GCI in his first year. So Michael did it in three. I was like, well, we did it in one. So yeah, right. as, long as, as long as I beat Michael I Reese it. in the first year. Can I stop a, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I remember, you know, I used to coach with uh, Mike and Jay at Kendra Reese. Yeah. I started yeah. back with those fellas in 2008, I believe it yeah. was, and worked with them for eight great years. And, and uh, so we have a long history together as well. Uh, I want to ask you a question because now you guys have a team. It's not just the two of you, but you've actually built an organization. Um, and, you know, when you get to that point, uh, you know, first you master your trade, you get good at the videos, then you start to bring on additional people, you have to manage them. But as you work up your way, up the, the income pyramid, as I call it, and you get to that top, it's all about leadership. What, what skills did you guys acquire in the service that you use today in your business? <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, you know, I, I think leadership is just always, always learning, right? I had never really taken on, you know, a, a true leadership position, you know, in the military when you're in Iraq. I mean, I did, I did convoy security. I was a 240 machine gunner. I mean, it's, it's all about your team. It's all about camaraderie. It's always about, you know, being willing to put, put your life on the line for your brother or your sister who's, who's right next to you, you know? And, you know, I, I, you know, over, over the last couple of years, you know, last, well, last November, we really kind of started to grow our local team here. And, you know, I, I've learned a lot. You know, I, I've made I've made mistakes this year, and, I, and I've, I've definitely made some decisions that were really, really good as well. But I, I, I think that the most important thing uh, is is the camaraderie. I think the, that if you if everyone loves you, one of our coaches that we have, you know, we, we were having a conversation. He was like Travis, like these real estate teams, you know, all over the country, the really good ones. Yeah, their production's going down, but you know what, Travis, they're still on the team. They're still sticking there, and the reason that is is because because they have such a good bond and such good camaraderie that it doesn't matter if there's a downturn in the market, you know, they still love to be there. And, you know, I've made a couple of decisions, you know, this year I've had, you know, 17, 18 agents and some of those people weren't a really good fit for, for being on the team. You know, we're, we're really cracking down now on a better hiring process, making sure that we have the right people, the right mindset, you know, just really qualifying people before we bring them on to the actual team here. Um, and just making sure that they're a really good fit, you know, doing things once a month with the team. You know, I had I had hired a couple. Oh, I had put some people in a position in the team. They were pod leaders, right? And I felt like, you know, maybe I gave away the reins too soon, and I lost touch with a lot of those people. And I think it's really important that if you are going to start a team, that you have to be there for your team. You have to make sure that that they understand that they can talk to you. I think that since I put those other people in that position, I think they felt like they couldn't talk to me anymore um, because you know. For, for whatever reason, I felt like they just felt like they couldn't talk to me anymore. And so we got rid of that position. And, and like now, you know, the team is getting back together. It's getting better and better and better. And I think I kind of lost sight of that a little bit is like, hey, the most important thing on having a team is, is that camaraderie because those those are your people who are going to be there for the good times and the bad times. And if you if they, if y'all love each other and, and, and everything is about love, if y'all love each other, they're, they're going to stick it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yvonne, you, you got anything you want to add about that? Yeah, I think uh, I just always try to remember, seek to understand, you yeah. know, so the thing is, is uh, I, I see a lot of things happen and, and it, it makes me want to jump to conclusions and I have to stop and take a pause and then, and, and I try to always ask first, you know, okay, am I missing something or is there something I'm unaware of or have I not communicated something well enough? Uh, and so uh, and what I find is that that usually brings the guard down. And so and it allows because uh, I deal more on the marketing side and operational side with the team on that side. I've, I, Travis has taken over the sales team. So uh, I've kind of stepped away from that side of it. And, you know, we have our ops manager, our agency manager, and we have uh, operations assistants and and also uh, social media manager. So we have a whole team on that side of it. And so whenever I, there's gaps or something, I just have to take a step back, calm down and, and say, okay, am I missing something? You know, is there something I'm unaware of? Are we working to improve this? And, I, and so that allows them to open up and be honest. And, you know, and I do it. And if, and if I mess up, I'll, I'll, I'll I, I have ownership yeah. of that, you know, and I'll say, look, uh, okay, I didn't explain this correctly. Uh, I didn't do this right. I, I'm not, I'm not above telling them that, okay, I, I screwed up there. So I, I'm just, I try to be open with them. 
you know, and so and, and try to keep that communication line open as well. And so for me, it's just it's just try to un- seek to understand first and then and then go for it. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, they I, I want I want some workers, though, you know, and yeah. that's the thing. And I, and I let them know we just had a, a meeting the other day and I said, this is what we have to focus on is attention to detail, at least on our side. When we're doing operational and marketing aspects, especially when we're publishing as much content as we're putting out there you know, guys, we've got to check, double check. And then once we publish, we need to go back and recheck and make sure that something didn't, you know, go off, you know, or get unpublished incorrectly or miss something. And, and so, you know, those are the types of things that we got to work through. So they know where, where, where I want them to be. And, and uh, so it's just trying to keep communication open. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, Levi is one of my best friends that he, he's taught me so much. And I love the fact that he says, you know, seek to understand because, you know, I'm, I'm really quick to, to jump the gun as well. And that's just not a good way to be in a leadership position without understanding all the pieces of the puzzle. So that way you could make, you know, have an educated conversation with people. So seeking to understand is one of the things that, you know, I'm working on. I mean, I'm working on it every single day trying to be a better leader. Um, but yeah, I mean, just uh, you hit it. You hit the nail on the head with that one. And yeah. I love that. Yeah. What, what are some of the uh, what are some of the characteristics that you look for in potential team members? Is there anything that really I mean that, that that's a must have? Yeah, I mean I, I think most importantly it's what you know they have to they they have to for one have a great attitude and they have to have faith and they have to believe that we're we're a good fit like me me and Levi we don't chase anybody we we attract people right so if if someone's coming to us or reaching out to us that that's a first check right because we're not having to necessarily go after them but you know if they have a great attitude they our, our business, especially on the real, well, I mean, the whole entire business is all about video, right? We truly believe that video is the key to success. I mean, everyone says all the time, content is king. And so if someone's now, especially now, if someone's coming on, I want them to have a great attitude. I want them to want to be a team player to and, and, and also make sure that they, they have the work ethic, that they, that they understand that if you're coming onto this team, that we want superstars. We want rock solid agents who are willing to work, who are willing to put in the effort and who believe in the team and like to be on camera. You know, we have 12 agents on our team and every one of those 12 is on camera every single day talking about living in Dallas, living in Dallas, living in Dallas. That is going to build our brand. And so, you know, other things that I've learned that I don't want, which I think are, are super important as well, are people who are just like lackadaisical, who are just okay with, you know, maybe making two or three sales a year. I mean, I don't want anyone like that on my team whatsoever. I want people who who want to be the best and who look up to us and, and want to get after it, you know? Yeah, you can definitely sense when <laughs> you have someone that's dragging behind. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and, I've, and it weighs I've, the whole team down. It does, and yeah. you know, we had we had people like that earlier in the year, right? They would, you know, I I I, I think it's cancer. You know, that's what yeah. I, that's how I look at it, right? Is like if you're going around and you're saying this little thing over here to to. to do something over here and then that person goes over here and says a little something and then this same person who's stirring everything up goes over here and it just kind of stirs that pot you know you got to get rid of that person immediately you got to cut that cancer right out and you know it it is completely and then people who don't have the same vision as us that that's what i love about the exp model is like that's totally cool you can stay in exp we want you to grow your own team we want you to be successful and sell real estate but you can't be on our team right because if you're going to be on our team it's all about living in dallas and the family and the camaraderie that we have because i mean we have some very 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 big goals for our real estate company sure sure but and i want to talk about you guys could hang your license anywhere um, I want to see if we can help understand a little a bit about why you chose EXP. One, as you mentioned, is that um, people don't have to leave to move up. Yep. You can, they can stay in the organization and you can help build them up. What are some other reasons that you guys chose to, to join EXP? Well, Michael Reese made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Reese made me do it. Too. Thanks, Mike. You got, well, thank you, Mike. So, you used to say you got Reese. <laughs> yeah. 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 The funny thing is, is that you know, again, yeah, he's been. I mean, he never gave up on me. He's been wanting me to get into real estate since 2004. And so he's always come back to me over the years. Hey, and I was just like, you know, I don't want to be an agent. Uh, it was over 2020 that I decided, okay, maybe now is the right time. So I actually did go with that be, by default, uh, just because to me at the time, brokerage didn't really matter, you know, but 
before I got in, the thing was is I think a lot of people get into real estate and then try to figure out a plan. Before I got into real estate, I wanted to figure out a plan and then decided if I, if I could figure out a plan and I felt comfortable moving into real estate, then I would do it because I, I knew what Michael wanted me to do. And the thing is, Michael knows who I am. He knows my work ethic. He knows my sales ability. And so he knows I will be good at that. But for me, I didn't see a path. I didn't, I didn't see, I know what he did in his first couple of years in the business. I didn't want to be the best postcard marketer on the planet. I didn't want to be Jay Kinder going to 531 listings, you know, uh, in a, in a year. So I was thinking, is there even a place for me? So I wanted to figure out, is there a marketing strategy that I could attract business? Uh, because I didn't want to go out and shake hands and kiss babies. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of people have built very big businesses that way. I was just in a different part of my life where I wanted to get, I wanted to sell one to many, you know, I wanted to, uh, make a uh, basically do something that would attract uh, or have the eyeballs of a hundred or a thousand or ten thousand people. So, so, uh, but I understood EXP from the very beginning. I understood the business model when I saw it made sense. Now that we're involved in that, uh, I, I believe it's absolutely the best brokerage for us because now we're able to partner with people across the country and across the world yeah. and help them. You know, the, we attract people not because of EXP though. We attract people because they want to get better on video. And so, you know, that is our attraction piece. And so we know that if people come to us and we can help them improve their production, then they're likely going to stick around, you know? And if they outgrow us even better, because if they if they start on the local team and, and expand and start their mm -hmm. own thing, that that's even better. We want them to we want them to leave and do that because yeah. then hopefully they have the ambition to grow their own team and their own organization. But you know, we've got people in our group in Canada and the UK. Uh, as far as I know, those are the two main countries outside of the U.S. and where else would we have that opportunity yeah. to partner with them? And so for that, if they if they partner with us, you know, we can extend, uh, we can teach them everything we know about YouTube and they can build their own channels in the UK, in Canada, in Houston, in Florida, in California. And we just wouldn't be able to do that anywhere else. Well, what tools do you have available for people that, that would want to join you and learn? Yeah, we built out, we built out a full uh, digital course. And so yeah. uh, again, anybody that, that partners with us, uh, I just, I would never have capacity. Yeah. I mean, we're almost up to 400 people in our organization. I can't teach 400 people one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. right, right. YouTube. So but is you that, know, do we have a, do we have a link or something to? I think that's uh, what, passive uh, prospecting. Yeah, passive prospecting. Yeah, yeah. Yep. passive prospecting. There? Oh, got they found one there. There okay. you go. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Uh, wow. Yeah, they tell go, us about this. Yeah, passive prospecting. You know, this is, uh, this is actually what I'm most excited about. I think Travis may be too. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is where, um, this is where we actually have a book coming out in February. So, and it's titled Passive Prospecting. And we, we've, you know, centered this whole concept around video marketing through YouTube because everybody loves the idea and the concept of passive income. But we know that it takes a lot of work to build up passive oh, yeah. income, right? And so, but this is the same thing. You know, if you're prospecting phone calls, emails, uh, postcards, billboards, TV commercials, that's one and done every yeah. single time. Every day you wake up, you're starting your sales position over again, right? Every conversation, you know, the second you hang up the phone, your lead generation stops. You know, if you're on the phone, you can only have one conversation at one time with one person. Now that that's effective, but you have to ask yourself, is it efficient? You know, mm -hmm. uh, and I know people that have built businesses that way, but when you create a video, that video and you house it on a place like YouTube, it starts working for you, not just uh, hour by hour, but in multiples. Uh, it doesn't take you time to do that, it makes you time. And not only does it make you time, it compounds your time. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, everybody loves compound interest, but we're compounding time through video. You know, one example is, is we made one video, it took us 30 minutes to make, it's been watched over 10,000 hours. So you, that's a direct correlation of the time that we've earned back, that, that is over a year's worth of time. Mm -hmm. You know, our channel through July in the first year and a half was watched 130,400 hours. That's equivalent to 14.88 years. So that's like turning a year and a half that we've been in the business into uh, one and a half decades worth of prospecting. Wow. You know, and yeah. that, that's the power of passive prospecting because it has that compound effect. And so that's what the book is going to be centered around is the whole uh, the passive prospecting principles. The first nine chapters are on why YouTube and video marketing is so powerful. The comparisons compared to everything else. And the last five chapters are nuts and bolts. Like how do you actually do it? Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't know of any other books that, 
especially on YouTube, that walk you through step by step mm, by right, step in yeah. there. So I think it's going to be very powerful. And the website is just where we house um, that. But, you know, the course is available now. And that's for people that want to start building their own channel uh, or people that join us. If they join us, it's a training tool, you know, that we can give to them. It's going to answer 99.9% .9 of their questions, right? And then right. if they, they come back to us, we you know, we just you got to do some tweaks or a, few, a little bit of coaching yep. here or there, and they're off to the races, you know? Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a lot of value. Yeah, tremendous, for somebody who's tremendous just value. It, yeah. And, I mean, and and what I love is also, I mean, you have you have other people in the organization. You know that that like maybe maybe you do try YouTube for six months or seven months or eight months, and that that's just not your thing. We have unlimited training, Facebook ads, TikTok, Reels, anything that you could possibly think of. If we haven't created it ourselves, we know the right people to get you plugged into. And that's what I love about eXp is you can just plug in with any, everyone is just so friendly. They're willing to share because we all understand that it's kind of one team, one dream. If, we, if, if we're all successful, then we're going to win. It's going to grow together. And so that's that's what I really love about you know eXp. But it doesn't have to necessarily be YouTube. You right. know, it, it could be it could be anything there's a number of things that to right. have success in, in real estate yeah and i think the financial alignment plays into that as well yeah oh yeah um really big yeah yeah well that's that's why i got into exp right i mean i i thought it, i when i was when i had my marketing agencies i spent most of my time working with real estate agents or, or people in the mortgage game right and i knew like i knew that eventually i was going to be successful i was going to sell so much real estate that I, I couldn't handle it myself right i knew that i wanted to grow a team and but i also knew i didn't want to ever be a broker i didn't want the overhead i didn't want the hassle i didn't want to have to worry about the, all the law and all, just all the all the hassle that you have to be to be a broker but it's also it's like where can i go and make make multiple streams of income because like you can go anywhere and sell real estate you're going to get paid your commission no problema right but now with exp we're getting stock out the wazoo we're making plenty of money passively from our organization as well so it's like yeah i can go i can go get sell real estate anywhere but i'm not getting stock and i'm not getting passive revenue we're not able to grow i mean we have people all over the world that are in our organization now as well so i just it was just kind of it, it was a no-brainer yeah, yeah. You, you touched on this earlier there's really not a barrier to entry in any market yeah right. there's yeah. no restrictions no. you can go pick up and do shop wherever you want absolutely yeah, yeah. which is really neat i mean i don't and if I want to, if I want to relocate to Puerto Rico, yeah, I, can I, 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 can, I can start a channel down yeah, there. I good. mean, I know yeah. exactly yeah. exactly what to do. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, the craziest thing about YouTube was like when I mean, I knew it was working when I started turning over the deals like really, really quick. But we were we were in California. We went to an event in LA, and then we went down to uh, what was the beach we went down to? Newport Beach. Newport Beach. I put six deals under contract while I was like just on the beach, just chilling. You know what I mean? It was like, that's the power of YouTube. Like we're going out of town for a week and uh, about 10 days. And guess what? YouTube is still going to be pro prospecting, prospecting for us. for them. It's, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. It's, I mean, you, you make it once and, and it sells a thousand or a hundred thousand yeah. times yep. for you. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely works twenty four seven. How are we doing on time, boss? Uh, you know, I hate to say this, but we are just about to the. Uh, to yeah. Can you believe that this has gone fast? It's gone by fast. Man. There was a, there was a question though that I've been saving that I, I've been dying to ask. I have one as well. So okay, we'll make this yeah. real quick. Yeah, yeah. So so you two are a partnership. Correct. What happens when you have a big decision to make, and you don't exactly see eye to eye on it? How do you decide? what to do do you guys flip a coin is it rock paper scissors <laughs> well i have my answer i'm sure you <laughs> i want to hear yours first bro i can't wait to hear this so i i we we've, we've defined our roles in the business yeah. you know marketing and ops and, and sales and so you know we we discuss things all the time and if it's a sales thing i i'll tell travis look man it's your call I mean, and, and I'm, I'm going to trust his judgment unless I see something that's just way out of left field now. And I think the same thing with Travis. Anytime I say, hey, I'm thinking he's like, OK, cool. I don't even have to finish the sentence sometimes. He's like down with the whatever. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, yeah. OK, cool. I think, you know, he's got that level of trust with yeah, me that he, he he knows that I've probably thought about it uh, a month in advance and, and tooled on it and went around and in circles and things like that. I think uh, uh, so. I, I, I think we're fine so far. We haven't had any really major problems. Now, the thing is, is we've, we've looked at some situations where we're like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that, you yeah. know, but you know, it, it is what it is. And, and we just, we, we learn from that. I don't see anything. I don't like the word failure. I don't mm. think we really 
fail at much. Um, we, we just learn. We yeah. learn how to do it differently or do it better the next time. You just get feedback. There's really no such yeah. thing yeah. As, as failure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the number one thing is trust. And Levi's never let me down. You know, he's, yeah. he's a very smart. That's what partner. I was going to try to get to. Is yeah. trust, trust the most yeah. important yeah. thing in your guys' relationship? It is, and that and that comes from you know the consist. I've never I've never met someone more consistent than Levi in my entire life. He is very dialed in, and and everything he says he's going to do, he does it right. I mean, he's helped me become a better man, a better person, a better leader. All these all these different things. You know, I'm a little younger, but I'm I, I'm striving to be better and better and better but you know when when it comes down to decision making you know we're both you know I think we're both smart enough to, to understand like, Hey, if we're, if we're going to go down this road, you know, we, we're not going to fight over it. Like if it, if it doesn't work, we'll just, we'll just course correct and we'll fix it really quickly. But like he said, I mean, we don't make a lot of mistakes like that. And if they are, they're very small and we fix the problem immediately. We don't get into fights about anything. You know, I mean, we, we just talk things through, you know, but we, we just talk things through and, and we come to a, a, an agreement and we roll with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right, last, last shot. Last question. Last shot. Ooh, last so, you, so you guys recently had a sit down with Pete, Gar Pete Vargas. We did. Talk <laughs> yeah. to me about that. What was that like? What was your biggest takeaway? How did you guys even get in a room with Pete Vargas? We, so. <laughs> we paid him a lot of money. Oh, a lot of money. <laughs> That's probably the answer. Yeah. Uh, you know, here's the thing is that we were talking on the car ride over here. Uh, you know, C3 was talking about fast, fast ride. I'm like, well, we've been very intentional about uh, We're intentional about everything we're doing. Uh, intentional and strategic. So even getting in front of the right people, the thing is, is that nobody's really going to market you better than yourself. And so you can't expect uh, the Cliff Freemans of the world and, you know, the corporate staff of EXP, I mean, to just say, oh, look, there's Levi and Travis. They're doing great. You know, nobody's really looking at stuff. You, you need to step up there mm -hmm. and, and, you know, rub shoulders, shake hands and do some kissing of the babies there. But, you know, so that's why uh, we didn't, I didn't realize this until Alex brought it up to us. But over this last year, we went to 25 conferences this last year wow. in 2022 that's in addition to doing a hundred million in sales yeah. and so number one you know the leads kept coming in because of the videos and number two we had a great team in place to yeah. allow us to do that to close these deals so we the the relationships and the people we've met have been have been uh invaluable but someone like pete um, Pete's a stagecoach, you know, and he, he's, he's a high ticket <laughs> item to pay for. Yeah. And that's somebody who we paid to get in front of because, uh, that was Travis. And that was one of those trust factors where th it was a, it was a six figure investment we'll just say for that, one day, for one day to spend with them. Yeah. And wow. Travis said, this is what we need to do. Oh, and, gosh. and so we sat down with, with, uh, with Pete. And that was also a part of a decision we made this year. Mm -hmm. You know, when everyone's saying, hey, you should diversify and buy homes, we're like, no, we're going to take, instead of putting 100000 into a house, we're going to put 100000 into Pete, yeah. who's mm -hmm. going to teach us how to rewrite our whole stage talk. And also we ran our other business ideas, passive prospecting. I mean, passive prospecting was an idea when we talked to Pete. Pete's the one that was like, no, guys, this is where you yeah. got to go all in on passive prospecting. And then he redid the whole talk. It's what led me to to build, you know, at build that that was the first time actually the yeah. week before when we spoke with Ryan Serhant <laughs> yeah. was the first time that I released the, the talk that Pete um, gave us the structure for. Mm, right. So so that we want to be the best at everything. And we knew we had we were getting these speaking opportunities come up. And so we made that investment to do that. And it, we've we already feel like we've made that back. Oh, yeah. So it's not even a, a thought process. Yeah. Or, I got to tell I can remember the day that Mike and Jay hired Dan Kennedy and they yeah. couldn't believe how much they paid yeah. to spend a day with him. You know how much it was? 50,000? $18,000. Oh, $18, yeah. It was a fortune. This is back in 2010. Yeah. yeah, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we did it, man. But you guys are reinvesting and yeah. you know what? You can't be a hoarder in life. You've no. got to pour back and reinvest in yourselves. Absolutely. And and, uh, and keep getting higher up the uh, the food chain man because if that's where you want to be you gotta you gotta know how people get there and yeah that's what that's what you do well guys I know it's uh, I'm gonna hope we're not well yep we're a little bit past time uh, here all right but uh, I want to thank you guys so much for being here uh, ladies and gentlemen if you'd like to get a hold of uh, Travis or Levi and ask him a question what's the best way to get a hold of you folks Instagram I guess yeah <laughs> Instagram uh, just first name last name Travis Plum 
Levi Lassick. Okay. No numbers in there, no crazy figures, just my name, yeah. Well, if you're and if you're in real estate and you're interested in, in learning anything about YouTube and growing your brand, then go to PassiveProspecting.com. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Awesome, All right. Guys. This reminds well, me of that Billy Gibbons. These guys are it. bad, and they're nationwide. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm talking <laughs> about? to the bone. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Ladies thank and gentlemen you. out there in YouTube land yourselves, we uh, – we love you. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. So we're going to send you much love from the Galleria Lincoln Center here in Dallas, Texas. And uh, we'll be back next week. we got more special guests coming next week. But thank you, guys. Uh, you guys make it a great day. We'll see you next week on Cliff's Notes. All right, folks, tune in to Cliff's Notes every Thursday at 1 o'clock Central for the tips, tricks, and tactics to explode your business. I guarantee it.